Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, I want to start by taking a look at cloud migration and a, a situation. And it's always easy to say, hey, we need to migrate to the cloud, right? You get that all the time. And that's great. And then it rolls up to the executive level and they say, okay, let's, let's move everything to cloud. But what you really need to consider is what is your goals and objectives, right? What are you trying to do? And you have to look at specific things like total cost of ownership. What does it take to run that on-prem versus off-prem and service that system? Is there a 20% savings? And we and CA does have those kind of ROI models and help you build those out. You have to look at, are you working quickly and fast? Can you provision your systems and deploy them? Go into cloud, that may increase, but it also may create complications. Are you in alignment with your security, your risk, departments, making sure that, that you just don't move the cloud, you have to make sure you're, you understand policies and procedures of your organization, uh, financial data versus something that is not secure. You have to look at all those things. And, and it's interesting, as you migrate to the cloud, think about your current contracts with your host providers, your data centers. Are they in alignment or or you have goals of getting on them. I, I don't know if, if you look at it this way, but I almost think it's back to the old days of looking at a, when you're in an office space and you're renting out a building, when does that lease end and when can I go to this new, new building? Think of it in those kinds of terms. So you have the greatest savings in the world, but if you're locked into that type of contract, you gotta understand that. And it's really important to engage your employees with the new skills of cloud migration, uh, not just making them work on the old systems, really make them a part of that. We'll talk that, about that a little later. And then ultimately, does this movement to the cloud give you more innovation for your customers, speed to market, the, that kind of thing? Uh, moving to cloud has to have that business reason. I want to walk you through kind of a cloud application migration model. And I'm going to start on the, the left hand side kind of discovery and planning. And this kind of, this gives you a, a roadmap and an approach to allow you as a, as an organization to, to get a repeatable process in place. So there's in the discovery and planning stage, I think the first thing you need to do is to establish and commit to a core team. If people are being asked to do this, it can't be why you're doing your quote unquote day job. Establish that team and that may involve bringing in expertise, but it needs to be a effort that, that is focused, there's not distractions, and there's no priority issues of your old job. So establishing that team, and I gave you some examples here, right? Uh, leads, architects, engineers, database, technical writers, all the different things and then getting into types of technologies. And then you look at your different systems or applications. You can look at them at a, a couple of different ways. You can look at them as a group. You can look at them as a specific function. There's all different types. And you, you categorize their migration, right? Are they, is it a lift and shift? Are you taking one application on-prem and putting it to cloud, that's kind of a lift and shift move. Are you going through a refactoring process where you're looking at small, medium, and large types of uh, changes? And, I'll, and I'm going to talk about that automatic deploy and refactoring process in a second. Or are you moving from a, a completely new platform? Are you going from, um, you know, a, a, a Java-based home Chrome kit that you've developed this system and you need to really move that to like an AWS platform but keep all the, the uh, services and microservices in place. Or are you frankly just gonna replace it? Maybe you have an old mainframe system and you're gonna be moving it to something else. Uh, I'll give you an example. 
that that I was personally just involved in. We had a we have a major custom built system that handled all the HR and process and things, and we moved to a a uh, cloud uh, solution. And I don't need to mention the names of the company that we did it with, but it was really really encouraging. So think of that replacement of that old mainframe system processing to I could use my phone to approve expenses and our time and those kinds of things. So that's that replaced look. So once you kind of categorize your different systems, you go in that planning play stage and you really need to look at it from your different applications, their size, your roadmap. How fast do you want to do this? And are you on a uh, situation where you need to get, it's going back to all the factors, right? Maybe you need to get off your host environment, that kind of thing. Um, really put that in place and plan. And that's everything from not just the architecture, but make sure you look at disaster recovery, right? Your your uh, security, your login, all the different types of things. And then start blueprinting out and playing the different types of systems. And that's really important in that planning stage. And all of this encompasses an ROI associated to it. You should not be just moving things to the cloud just because you think it's a great idea. This is not a, I'm going to say, a, uh, a uh, just a exercise. You have to, you have to have validation, you have importance, and those kinds of things. So, let me walk you through a typical automation and deployment approach, and understand the things that we talked about in discovery plan. Everything from a core team to categorizing to planning, and reading it around the wheel. You you start with a blueprint strategy, and that's that blueprint plan in that last bullet. It, say it's uh, Java for 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 giggles that you want to look at all your Java type uh, solutions as they relate to your systems. So you look at establishing path uh, patterns, workflows, and and really, and that's why I mentioned DevOps up front. Really get into some tool set and pipeline approaches. Uh, whether, you know, continuous integration, continuous deployment, and how you're doing your, your login. And then you, you establish those kinds of patterns, and then you're starting, starting to see the picture of what are the systems and applications that link to that. And you, then you start looking at what is the acceptance criteria when you look at those? Do you have your uh, performance criteria, establish smoke tests, really getting ahead of it. Uh, staying within um, the objective of the movement and that pattern. And finally then looking at types of monitoring, and that's with tools, alerts, security, not just the application and, and getting it done. Then you, you really go through the process. You automate, you validate, which is a test, and then you deploy it. You monitor the costs. Uh, I want to talk about this because I'm going to talk a little bit about this later in operations. Moving the cloud is a great thing, but you got to have an operational framework around it. Uh, we've seen cases where people utilize certain uh, uh, platforms and move to the cloud, and I, I don't want to name them because it's not their fault, but you get the opportunity to spin up uh, basically cloud solutions and, and platforms, and they forget about and run them, and then you get a bill later. They, we've seen issues where people have cost overruns of a million dollars because they had all these different uh, cloud instances running, and no one monitored it. And then the the last thing in that deploying train is make sure you have an operations playbook and how it works and you train your staff and you transition it. Uh, I will tell you in today's day and age, uh, there is a, a